So some people have said, is Caitlyn James retiring from weddings? The answer to that is no, but I have pivoted and I'm doing something I said I would never do. I'm gonna break down why and help you understand how you can make changes in your business as you evolve as a photographer in a new season of life. All right, so this is something that I have wanted to do a video on for a while. I've wanted to answer this question for a while. Um, a lot of people have seen that I've been doing family sessions. I actually had someone DM me and say, every time you post a family session, I go to your website and, and see if you're offering them. I'm not offering them like to the public, but I have a long list, long list of people that I have been wanting to do family shoots for for years and I have not had the capacity to do so. And so that leads me into talking about making pivots in your business um, when you can just feel that a change needs to happen. Now, this is why it's embarrassing. I have said, I am, I am on record so many times saying, I will never be a family photographer. I'm like, I'll never take family portraits. And then, you know what? My life changed and I became a mom to not one, not two, not three. I've had four babies in the last, how many years? Five years. Um, one is in heaven, um, which has just made me cherish photos even more. And so I recognize the value of family photography now more than ever. I have flown my entire family all the way out to Utah. I had a six month old at the time and I took a five year old, no, a four year old, a two year old and a six month old all the way to Utah just for family photos. So it, needless to say, I have realized the value of having great family photos and documenting seasons of life with young children. So my life has changed. I, you know, when I started as a wedding photographer, Michael and I were newlyweds. We were living our best life. We were traveling to shoot weddings. I was shooting like 40 plus weddings a year. He was with me, all of our friends, no kids, same season of life. It was awesome. I mean, it was so fun. But we also love this season of life. You know, it's our best season, we're exhausted, but it's our best season of life. And so I realized, okay, I don't have to be shooting 25 plus weddings a year anymore. And I slowly scaled back. And then I started thinking to myself, what is actually gonna bring me joy? And there was a, um, an artistic creative shift. There was also a lifestyle shift that was happening and a business shift. So I'm gonna break those three things down. One, the artistic shift was, I enjoy, I found that I enjoy taking family photos, not because I'm creatively challenged to create this epic masterpiece. That is not what I have found joy in with family photos. That is what I have found joy in with weddings. Now, I love serving families and capturing those moments that are emotional and once in a lifetime. I love that. But my favorite part of being a wedding photographer is creating epically composed, well-framed, impressive portraits, right? That is a challenge for me. If I see light glowing on a hill and multiple layers and I can create composition, I mean, I just know I can create magic with this. A family, however, I literally just did a shoot la to, uh, last week um, in a sunflower field with this super cute family. And I had to let go of a lot of expectations because all the kids were five and under and they were all boys and I just couldn't control them. I just had to get what I could get and not throw a fit. So that's what I did and I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it for a different reason. I used to obsess over these wedding portraits and I still do when I'm shooting weddings, right? I get that out of my system every time I shoot weddings. The reason that I love family portraits, my, my mission, my purpose, my passion in it is creating and capturing family moments that I know that mom is gonna cherish just as much as I cherish images that I got last year from Brienne Weston. She's my favorite family photographer. When we when I, we took our family to Utah, like it is about capturing a family. It's not about really scaling and pushing my artistic ability. So that has been a big shift. And when I realized something has shifted in me to where I understand now family photography is not, yes, sure, you can create epic masterpieces, but in my mind, I enjoy it because I know what it means to the mom, because I am a mom. That shifted in me. It's a different approach um, to wedding photography. There's a lot of parallels there, but that was how I changed artistically. The other way that I changed was that my lifestyle changed. So I have multiple children and they're very young. We are launching a school that we own and, and operate. We have a multifaceted um, online business, which is another change I'll get to in a second. So I just knew, you know, I don't have to be gone 25 weekends out of the year. Is there a way that I could adjust my life and my work and what I'm shooting to fit into what I actually want in my life? And I, something that I realized is that it is not wrong to think about what you desire in life and to try to mold it and fit it into your business model. So this is going to sound crazy, but 
I wanted to see more of my friends. I wanted to see their children, my college friends, my hometown friends. I wanted to meet their children, and I wanted to, to be able to serve them in a way that I have said no to them for years. So a lot of these people, I photograph their weddings, and then they've said, can you do maternity? Can you do newborn? Can you do family? And I'm like, no, 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 I don't do that. I'm a wedding photographer. And I just realized, I want to eat dinner with them and then go do a family shoot with them. I want to meet their kids and share life with them. And I'm in a season where my kids would love playing with their kids. I'm in a season where I could make a change and fulfill something I desire in life by doing something and pivoting in business. And so I pivoted to offering family sessions. I do maybe one or two a month. And what's crazy is that even though my artistic approach to family sessions, I kind of pivoted there and then my lifestyle pivoted. I wanted to have more freedom and do what I wanted and see family and friends more through my work. Um, the third thing is that my business was transitioning. KJ All Access, is a membership site that we have had for over four years now. I'll tell you, I launched, I launched this thing in 2018. It was the same year that I was pregnant, surprise pregnancy. We were so excited. It was our first boy. But literally, I launched All Access in January. And then February 12th, we found out that this baby was not going to survive. And I committed to carrying him. And I carried him for three months. And he steadily declined. We knew we were going to lose him. And finally, on May 1st, we lost him. But during those months, that is when the start of my membership happened. It was the most profitable year we've ever had in business and was also the most miserable year of my life because we lost a child. It was crazy, right? I thought for sure KG All Access was gonna just die, <laughs> but it hasn't died. It has maintained for years. And we show people behind the scenes, me shooting weddings and engagement sessions and some portrait sessions, but we really hadn't dove into the family portrait world because I've never been a family portrait photographer, remember? So this past year, we said, you know what? KG All Access has been at the same number of members for the longest time. We've got to decide what's going to happen with that. When I made a lifestyle switch to start doing family sessions, the craziest thing happened. All Access started skyrocketing again. Why? Because so many of you are family photographers. And so many of you love watching me shoot weddings but you're not shooting weddings. And so when I said, guys, I'm starting, I'm getting into the family portrait world. If you wanna watch, those are gonna be some episodes that we release um, every other month so that family photographers have a place within KGL Access. And the response has been phenomenal. The reason I'm telling you all this is because when I look at my decision to take on family sessions, one, I had to let go of my pride and admit that I needed to make a change. And I'm gonna do something that I've told the world I don't want to do and that I will never do, right? Maybe never say never. Maybe that's the point of this video because I've said that so many times. Like, I'll never switch to mirrorless. I love mirrorless now. I'll never, uh, what's another example? Buy I'll never buy RF lenses. I own like all of them now. I will never shoot family portraits. And guess what? I'm doing this now and it was a great decision for my family. It was an amazing decision for the business and it was an amazing decision for my friendships. I love being able to say to family and friends, hey, you know what? I'd love to capture your family. Let's find a time next month. Let's book it. Let's do it. Um, do you mind if I film it? And I get to film it for people who our community. It was great for our community. So my encouragement is, one, swallow your pride. Maybe never say never. But two, if you feel like a shift needs to happen, right? And I know there's more that goes into this, right? We have an education side to our business that financially supports the whole everything. So financially, we were allowed to make this shift, but there's a lot of people that will not allow themselves to even consider making any pivots or any changes. They won't even allow themselves to try to raise prices for their weddings because they've always done things a certain way and they're so afraid to make any type of change and move away from what's familiar. So allow yourself to have freedom to consider, is there a way for me to pivot? Maybe it's just a slight pivot, right? You don't have to pivot. You don't have to do this. You don't have to lose your specialty. I still feel like I am a specialized wedding photographer. Like that is my thing. I get on a wedding day and I just know what to do and it just flows out of me and it is easy and it is natural. That is my thing. I don't feel that at a family shoot yet. Maybe if I do it for a decade, I will. But I know that family photography is something that I needed to do because there was an open season in my life where the pivot needed to happen. So if you're experiencing the nudge, the frustration, the burnout, 
the schedule that's too full, the kids that are resenting you, and you need to make a change, maybe your change is bumping up prices and taking less and trusting that process. Maybe your change is pivoting away from weddings and doing some high-end family portrait sessions and really being honest about what you can do with your lifestyle. I don't know what that looks like for you. I just want this to be encouragement to you. So a good point to think about is that you don't want to wait until it's too late. If you wait till it's too late, Ty, great example. If you want to turn a cruise ship around, like you got to start that process early. Like that's a big, that's a big thing to shift. But if you want to start small, like for example, for me, I said yes to doing family portraits for two people. And it, at, at the time it seemed like such a big deal because I don't do that. But I did those two shoots and I came home and I thought, I actually, I actually want to look at these photos. I'm actually excited to see what I got. I walked into one of those families' homes like a couple weeks ago, and um, they have one of their portraits, I mean, gigantic, maybe like, I don't know, it's 40 by, it was huge. It was over the mantle, and it was beautiful. And I thought to myself, that makes me happy. I feel the same way seeing that over their mantle as I would a wedding portrait. And so I'm so glad I took that risk, and I'm so glad I just dipped my toes in, right? Because I could have dipped it in. I actually told friends, I'm trying this out doing these two shoots and they text me later like what did you think and I'm like I actually loved it that's that is what it looks like to dip your toes in you try it out if you hate it you hate it and that's okay but trying to make little subtle changes saying yes to things you wouldn't normally say yes to saying no to things that you probably should have started saying no to a long time ago that's how you make a very slight pivot have you ever stopped to really consider what you need in life a lot of people I don't know especially women uh, don't do this very well. They don't stop and think about like, what do you need? What, what kind of space do you need? What workload can you actually handle? Are you healthy? Are your relationships healthy? Is your heart healthy? Is your mind, like, are you inspired anymore? Or are you just going through the motions? Like, what do you need as a business owner and as, and as a living human being um, to feel, feel fulfilled and enjoy your work? And I think that is maybe, if I'm being honest, the foundational thing that has meant so much to me is that I am making these changes um, and swallowing my pride. A little embarrassing to be like, yeah, I said I'd never do it, but I am. I'm doing that, though, because I know I need it. And I know that there's other pivots happening in my business that I'm doing because I need it. I know I need it. And the risk of not doing it is potentially losing it all. This time last year, I was taking a break in August because I was done with everything. And I was done with everything because I was just going through the motions for so long and not taking time to think about what do I actually need? Am I fulfilled in what I'm doing? Do I love what I'm doing? Or am I honestly burned out? So if you've never taken time to figure that out and you're struggling in more ways than one, that would be my first piece of advice is to think through what do you want, what do you need, and what do you enjoy, and then start to make ideas and plans to pivot. So I don't know where you are. You could be brand new. You could be like KJ uh, 2010, where I was like in the prime of like, I was a newlywed myself, loving weddings, shooting 30 to 40 a year. All of our friends were shooting 30 to 40 weddings a year. That was just... That was like our prime as wedding photographers. And that season was so good, but it's okay that that was a season. I don't shoot 30 weddings a year anymore. If you are in the hustle phase and you're like, I'm loving these weddings, I wanna book 50 a year. Well, you do that, do it, because that's gonna serve you really well in the future. And the more you hustle now in a healthy way, hopefully, um, the, the more freedom you will have in the future because of the hard work you put in now. But if you're not in that season and you're in a season where you've been working hard and you are feeling tired and you're feeling like you don't know how much longer you can do this, then pay attention to that. That is what I did, and I made some changes, and they're not drastic. I'm still shooting weddings. I'm about to fly to Chicago to shoot a wedding in a couple of weeks. I haven't lost who I am as a, as, as a wedding photographer, but I allow myself to consider, is it possible for me to make a pivot without losing everything that I've built? And it was. There's a lot of things we believe in here that are not actually truth. So my encouragement to you is no matter what you, what season you're in, to really analyze and evaluate where you are. Are you happy? Are you inspired? What does your life need? What do people in your life need? And make a decision, a healthy decision, to either continue going down the path that you've been on and pursue it hard or allow yourself the freedom to choose a pivot. Everything we we're just talking about, it, it re revolves around KJ All Access, which is our membership that allows you to watch me shoot. It allows you to hear how I talk to people, how I interact with people, what it looks like to be on the other side of my camera, the final images, editing demos, all those things. $29 a month, best investment you can make. If you've never invested in education, this is a place to start. Why? Because it's affordable and it's real life. Link below.
If you're not sure if you want to dive in, try it for five days. You can go through the archives, the vault. There's literally over 50 weddings and portrait sessions in there from all around the world. Go in there, watch some for five days, see if you love it, and then join us. Bye. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. 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 Oh,